Hey there, my friends. This is Bill McDonald, the reading and writing doctor. I'm hoping that most of you are getting pretty excited about getting to start your spring break. Uh, today, I'm heading to Dallas after I record this video to spend a day or two with my son and the rest of the family. The grandparents are coming down from Kansas, and then we're going to head home for spring break, take some relaxation time, kick back, and kind of just slow down a little bit. It's been a pretty rough year for all of us, I'd say. But what I want to tell you is that if you have been part of one of my trainings at your campus or district year, this year, or you came to one of the Texas teacher training tour events in one of the several cities that I went to, purchased the Crest training last summer, or chose the no in-person training option so that you could get the hard copies and digital copies of my, all my materials. I want to, I'm excited to tell you that starting this week, starting today even, I'm going to be re recording up to three to five short five minute to 10 minute videos to help you on all of the areas of Eng English language arts. Now, because some of you don't have my my any of my materials, I want you to know that the binder, the mini binder is called Dear Doc. And that stands for daily, as in, as in every single day, the quantity of minutes sometimes uh, affects the quality of your minutes. So we'll talk about that quite a bit, how to multitask and kill a lot of birds with just a few stones. Editing, you have eight, nine, or 11 questions each in elementary, middle school, and high school. Revising, you have eight, nine, or 11 questions each. Reading, you have 22 to 30 something, one and two point reading questions, short constructed responses, um, short answer responses. On editing, you'll get pretty much multiple choice and drop down or revising it'll be multiple choice drop down and text entry where your kids have to write a word a phrase or a sentence and when you write the essay they're going to be looking at how you taught them to develop organize and have a good conventions with it in other words what is its content and my program my teaching name is the ELAR, the English Language Arts Reading. I'm also Spanish, and I can do some Spanish lessons for those of you that are needing that. Uh, if you haven't purchased materials and you want the Spanish, you just have to mention that in the No in Person training, part two of the instructions. Write prescription, writing prescription. Editing, revising, reading, constructed, short answer essay for students needing bandages and surgery. Now, how do I do that? Because a lot of students are struggling with reading and writing, we have to take an emergency room approach, not just to the writing, but to the reading, the, the editing, and the short answer as well. For example, if this was not editing and revising, it would stand for the short answer evidence and response, because in order to get a two, that's all you need. And then the reading is about 50% of your grade. The writing is about 50, the other 50% of your grade. I jokingly call myself the writing doctor, but I'm also the reading doctor. And my whole binder, and all my materials are based on this little subtitle, 
I call it a scaffolded approach to guiding visual, verbal, auditory, and kinesthetic students from being able to go to from letters, words, lines, sentences, stanza, scenes, paragraphs, sections, and not just passage, but passages, not just selection, but selections, and then all the way to the point where they can write five-star essays following the guidelines of the rubric more than the guidelines that have been pretty low uh, standards set by the actual samples. Now, if you have any questions and you're watching this through my YouTube page, then feel free to email me at writing underscore doctor at yahoo.com because I, I don't want you to miss out on this opportunity to uh, either have me come and do a training I am going to offer uh, from after spring break on. If anybody uh, wants to do a reading writing camp on a Saturday or I, I work with one grade in the morning and one grade in the afternoon. Uh, in that approach, you're not having to hire any substitutes. And so that that is a special gain for you, okay? And the cool thing is you still get all the materials. Uh, up to 10 teachers will get the materials. Uh, and what I'm going to do is have a special deal where if you just do one day of training, it will be the $2,000 that normally happens. Two days, as long as they're consecutive, if I'm traveling, will be the $1,750 per day. And if anybody chooses to do three days or more of any sort of a writing camp or the, a practice review, just a crash course with your students to get them pump, pumped up and excited, I'll do uh, for this last month from now up until the test. Uh, and I think I'll probably even offer that, you know, in May, April, uh, April, May, June, and July, uh, if you do three days or more of any type of training with your campus or with your district, then I'll do, I'll come for $1,500 a day. Just make sure that those are, days are consecutive and I, I can be working again with students while teachers observe that eliminates the need for a substitute. We can do Saturday camps, but what I'm gonna do for those people who can't afford that or you're, it's just not in the timeline for you guys, well, I'm gonna be spending the next month helping all of you people who have had a training or who have purchased the crest or the texas teacher training tour i'm gonna step up the notch a little bit speed up the pace and try to help you with as many areas as possible so what my next video is going to be on because i had this amazing teacher from here in vernon we are going to talk about the concept of a sentence versus a fragment and usage and run-ons and sometimes just missing character traits based on five characters from The Wizard of Oz and even the road that they used to travel on, okay? So before I get started, I have to give credit. This was drawn, as I shared the concept, by a beautiful young lady named Dina R. Manataya. Uh, at first I thought it was Manatoya, but um, Manataya, she did this barely yesterday. And so your students might not be artists. And I did, when I was modeling this, mine looked nothing like this. So just be aware that it's not the quality, it's the content that's gonna count. So let's first talk about Dorothy, character number one. She's the main character, okay? Dorothy has an S on her head, meaning that she's a shut of the subject, okay? She has 
a P and A and a V in her body because her sentence also has a predicate, the action, the verb. She has an E on her skirt because she has to end her street called a sentence with a period, an exclamation, or a question mark. And so from here on out, don't forget that we'll be thinking of punctuations as stop signs because a sentence is like a street that you pave. So the second part that's the, on the left side, when we say subject, what is that? Well, it's a person, place, thing, or idea if it's singular. If it's plural, it's people, places, things, or ideas, okay? And now this bottom part, when you're looking at a sentence, you're gonna help the students also understand, is the subject simple, meaning just one person, one place, one thing, one idea, or is the predicate simple, one person, doing one thing uh, or possibly two people compound subject with a simple predicate those are all things that you have to teach your kids and the same thing on this side is it a compound subject meaning dorothy and the scarecrow that would be the compound subject dorothy comma scarecrow comma and the tin man that would be a compound subject. Compound predicate would be Dorothy um, helped the scarecrow find his brain, the comma, he, the tin man find his heart, and the lion find his courage. Okay? So the last part that I want you to look at it, at Dorothy is when they ask for usage, about a complete sentence, they're going to say, what change, what error should be made in sentence blank? And that sentence has a problem. And for usage, and we'll see this in our next video, because we're going to practice something I'm going to call UPS, usage, punctuation with run-ons, which is my friend... Um, not toto, but tutu. When a sentence is too long, it's a run on, and then there's a period. When a sentence is too short, it sometimes has a fragment because it's missing the heart or the brain. Okay. So if you call a sentence a run on, okay, you're going to say, okay, well, that's basically Dorothy a complete thought, and another character, the Wizard of Oz, or the Good Witch of the North. If we have two sentences, but only one punctuation, that's called a run-on, okay? One of the usage things that we'll practice is check the previous sentence. If this is sentence four, then you might want to check, check sentence three, to find out, A, one finger, is, is the subject singular or is it plural? Is the predicate um, present tense? Is it past tense or is it future tense? So the red means the question, what is the problem? What is the sentence that they're asking about? Yellow means, do we back it up and check the previous sentence? And Green means go forward and check the following sentence. So uh, when you have usage, you can check it that way. When you have a run on, you have to read Dorothy out loud. In other words, her subject, predicate, action, and her ending. And listen for a pause. Because when Dorothy ends her sentence with her shoes, you'll hear a natural pause. And my friend Shelly from Vernon said, 
Dorothy has it all. Now, I use the yellow because yellow means slow. Slow down, push the shift button, because even though you have a sentence or a fragment, they're going to be starting all of these sentences with capitals. And so you'll have to push the shift button so that the first letter of the first word of one of these sentences or fragments has a capital <clears throat> with the period. You just push the, the period button on the keyboard with the exclamation, exclamation, you push the shift button and your emotions are high. So the key, you push the upper le left hand portion to find that one. And the question mark and the period are pretty close together. So then let's talk about our next character. His name is Scarecrow. He knew that he was missing a brain. Okay. Well, if you don't have a brain, it's like being missing a subject. That you'll have a capital letter there of something, but it might be just an adverb or uh, an adjective or um, a verb, something that's not a person, place, thing, or idea. So without the brain, you can have the predicate, the action, the verb. You can have a punctuation mark, but you're really not a complete thought. So Scarecrow is <clears throat> a fragment. Our next friend in line is missing his heart which means there's no predicate. There's no action. There's no pulse. There's nothing keeps that keeps him alive. There's nothing that, he, that has valves because your heart has different valves uh, that, that pump blood in and out of them. And so even though we have a person, place, thing, or idea, singular, people, places, things, ideas, plural, if we're missing the predicate, Mr. Ten Man, we are not a sentence because we have no heart, no predicate. Our next character, lion. Someone has been lying to the lion because he has his capital he has his punctuation he is a complete thought and i'll make sure that i add uh, i don't want him to feel neglected so i'm trying to skim through all of my pens and make sure that he looks the right way where are you yellow Pen. I'm having a hard time finding it. That's the only problem I have with doing live videos. There it is. Thank you so much for your patience. He has a subject. He does start his sentence with a capital because he'll push the shift button. But there's this T in the middle. And a lot of times, the students in our classrooms, it's not because of sentence structure. It's not because we're not great teachers. It's because they have traits or they're missing traits, character traits that will help them become whoever they're supposed to be in life. And so the, the T is the trait. All these other T's are just teaks and sentences with topics. So our, our last character is the dog. And so if the question says, what change should be made in sentence blank? And I'll show that to you. What change? error should be made in a sentence blank, that means that's a regular Dorothy, and it just has a problem 
one little detail with something with capitalization, with usage, with singular versus plural, past, present, or future, um, with the punctuation or possibly the spelling because it's just um, a basic cups question, okay? But if it says, what is the correct way to write sentence blank, then they're telling you that that sentence is either an RO, that's Dorothy, Dorothy, or a fragment. So let me show that to you. If I have a run on, it means I've got a sentence and a sentence, but only one period. Like I said, it's like having two characters, having two streets, but only one stop sign. If the sentence happens to be a fragment, then that would be the scarecrow or the tin man. The student would have to read it carefully and listen. If the person, place, thing, or idea is missing for the subject, or if the predicate, the action, the verb are missing uh, for the, the heart. And my little friend Tutu, instead of Toto, when the sentence is too long, he's going to bark. If the sentence is too short, he's going to bark. And rough means rough, rough. There's either a run-on or a fragment. Now, whenever the last one is mentioned, it says, what is the correct way to write sentences blank and blank? So what they're saying in that case is that one of the two sentences is complete, Dorothy, and the other one is a fragment, either the Tin Man or the Scarecrow. Or it's possible that the first one, we can look at that, that it's a fragment and a sentence, that the first one is the Tin Man missing his predicate, followed by an, a Dorothy who has it all, who's complete, or it's a fragment followed by a sentence. And so what I'm trying to do here is teach things that are pretty hard using this little cool anchor chart. And I will take a picture of this for all of you who have been in the trainings and send it to you so you can kind of have that. Maybe the kids might want to color it. Uh, some of them that are artists might do their own. We can have a little art contest to see which student can turn in the coolest looking chart like this to learn the different types of sentences. And so our next several videos will be practicing what I'm going to call UPS, usage with Dorothy, with regular cops problems, run-ons or fragments with two Dorothys or a, uh, a scarecrow or a tin man and a come two sentences that have Dorothy and the scarecrow or the scarecrow and Dorothy or tin man and Dorothy uh, what they're trying to help your kids see is you have to be able to tell which one of these are a fragment and which one is a complete thought. So that leaves us with my last little drawing at the bottom. When they were singing, they kept singing this song called Follow the Yellow Brick Road. Well, I'm going to call it a green, yellow, and red brick road, also known as a street. Because when a sentence starts, you're going to keep going until you have a subject and a predicate you only slow the sentence down uh, with bricks that we're going we're gonna to call yellow that are commas, apostrophes, colons, semicolons, quotation marks. And then we'll call it the red 
brick because the last brick in the sentence is going to have a stop sign called a period, an exclamation, or a question mark, just like you'll see with these fragments who thought they were sentences and Dorothy who knows she's a sentence. So do me a favor and please share or tag one of your reading and writing teacher friends to see uh, UPS, usage, punctuation, sentence boundaries from a different approach. And uh, take advantage if you want to be part of our 30-day challenge with kids. Um, we're going to have a little contest. Uh, I want you to be sending me your most incredible students each week and uh, from your classroom or classrooms and your most improved either with academics or behavior and we're going to put all of those names if you send it by messenger by email uh, many of you have my cell number you can text me just the first and last name and what school the child is from what grade level and what we'll do is we'll have a special little raffle uh, after the test to reward the kids who make the most growth or do the best, uh, your most incredibles, your students of the week, and your most improves. And when we have this raffle, I'll reach inside. And what we'll do is we'll have a $100 prize for the most incredible. Let's say I have 200 tickets in there. One student will win $100 and we'll send a gift card that you have to be part of one of my trainings or uh, join the no in-person training to participate in this. If you do that, then you get all the hard copies, you get the digital copies, everything that else, everybody else already has. There's, I think, over 500 people, uh, close to a thousand now, it seems like, that have done a training or done crash or um done the texas teacher training tour so um i look forward to helping you these last 30 days with our dear doc challenge god bless you guys and have a wonderful rest of your day and spring break if you don't plan on watching me because you want to spend time with family and friends